wealth opens up the door, but mm. health makes you go through the door. Ooh. Because if you don't have your health, there's nothing you can do with all of that money. It won't buy mm. you a new, well, look at Steve Jobs. He had a liver. He had enough money. All right. What's up, what's up, my fly folks out there? How y'all doing? I hope y'all doing all right. And today we have a very special guest on my show, my beautiful Nana, Miss Pamela Thomas. Welcome to the show, Nana. Well, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here with you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We're happy to have you here. You know, like I was telling my uh, co-host, Remy G, you know, we're always super excited to hear reviews and testimonials from our audience that are changing their life just from listening to our show. But when I received your call, Nana, it really hit home. Well, you know, it really hit home for me to be able to listen to you guys and then understand and learn and apply what you said. And mm. I saw the manifestation of me applying what you're saying. And I'm just, I'm just excited. And I know it's just going to get better and better. Oh yeah. You already know. you like, you know, I just feel like, you know, especially since we were so close, you know, even, even since we were, since I was born, you know, just you talking up a storm in a, in a delivery room <laughs> and, and having my mom say, <laughs> You know, <laughs> and your mother told my son, her husband, tell Nana to be quiet. <laughs> and I always talk, and I was like, oh, but I didn't hear that part then. I only heard it after I watched the video a couple of months later. Yeah, we definitely made the show show that show that video one day. <laughs> you know, just our um, relationship over time. You know, it's always been real close and real tight. And you know, I know you remember that summer right before I went to high school. I think I was about 13 or 14 and I wanted a job. And I, I think you know what story I'm about to tell. <laughs> you would have you would you would have laced the laced the fly folks up on, on that story, Nana. That was the dumbest idea I ever had. And I thought it was a good idea. Okay. So he wanted a job. So smart me said I should get him a job at the college where I was working. So I called the athletic um trainer. And I asked her, I said, can, can my grandson work down there with you for the summer? And she said, I don't have any positions. I said, just make up something. I said, and I will pay him and I'll just give you the money and you write him out a check. And get, so Hassan got, went on the interview. He said, the lady didn't ask him enough questions. I was like, oh my God. So I yeah. called the lady. I said, you didn't ask him a lot of questions. And then, so he said he got the job and then I think it was two weeks later, he wanted to ask her for a raise. Now, yep, mind you, need that. The, the money was coming out of my little paycheck. And I was like, oh, my God, this is the dumbest thing I ever said. So I was actually paying him, but I couldn't tell him I was paying him. He really thought he had a job. Yes. And the next summer, my other grandson said, Nana, y'all have any jobs at the college? I said, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. I, am not. I thought it was a good idea at first. That, and that's why... You know, just that really instilled that work ethic in me, though. So I really appreciate you for that. And, and you know, I'll never forget that because I didn't find out until the was it, was it the night before graduation, my high school graduation. Yes, <laughs> we said we should tell you that. <laughs> Your mother was trying to give me money back. I said, no, let me suck it up. I made it. I made this bed and I'm going to lay in it. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely, definitely, you know. And, as, you know, about three weeks ago, I remember when you called me and, you know, you let me know that you actually raised your credit score to over 700. So I, I'm definitely congratulations on that. First of all, congratulations on raising your credit score to over 700. You know, we got that FY fly credit repair coming soon. Now, so Y'all stay tuned. But, you know, so before we get into how you raise your credit, tell us a little more information on you and your background. Just, uh, you know, talk, talk to the listeners real quick. Okay, I'm a I'm a registered nurse. Born I was born and raised in Kankakee, Illinois. I'm the youngest of 12 kids. And um, so as a nurse, I've worked in different fields, but I think my greatest reward was working at Prince George's Community College, where I met and was able to influence a lot of the students there. And I still have relationships with those students. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's been a joy. Even though I took a $25,000 pay cut for that job, it ended up being my assignment and it was a blessing to me and a blessing to a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. 
So talk to us now, you know, so what were some of the things that you learned from the podcast that really allowed you to go out there and raise your credit score? Because honestly, one of the main goals for our podcast to inspire people and actually give them actionable steps that they can take to improve their overall finance. I, I learned that I need to look at my bank account, which I wasn't looking at it at all. A lot of people. I need to look at it every day and make sure that, you know, they're not taking anything from me that they shouldn't. I learned that um, I talked to the bank because I had three or four accounts with them and they were charging me $10 a month. Mm -hmm. And I went and told them that since I had these accounts with you, you shouldn't be charging me for any of these. So they put those fees back in to my account. Okay. I learned that from you guys. I learned to um, not spend all my money <laughs> and, and to save some and don't go for, to buy the first thing I see really, if I needed to save for it or think about it, think about it for a couple of days before you go buy it. Mm -hmm. I don't use my credit card as much. I, I pull my credit card out in a minute, but no. now <laughs> I don't. And I'm paying down my credit cards. And so I'm very excited about that. Definitely. And I learned, um, I, I learned that I need to have more than one stream of income and to mm -hmm. invest in more than one area. Definitely that diversification. But the one big thing that you said was paying down that debt. So I believe from you, when you pay down that debt, you're lowering your credit utilization rate. And average credit utilization rate should be below 30%. So by you paying down those debts was lowering your credit utilization, which, rode, which raised your credit score above that 700. So we're definitely happy that, you know, we could, you know, give you those type of advice, give you those tips. You know, we have great guests come on there and talk about credit and the different ways that you can lower, I mean, different ways that you can raise your credit score. So that was huge. So what was the credit education like coming up? Because, you know, we still don't learn about it today in school. And, you know, if our parents didn't teach us, you know, we aren't going to know about credit until we try to get a home, a car, a credit card and end up, you know, getting denied for it. So what was the credit education like and how did you initially learn about credit? We weren't taught anything about credit, even in our house. I remember my parents counting out pennies and nickels to pay the insurance man, mm. to pay the milkman. Now, remember, this was in the 50s and 60s. So they would, my father made $50 a week with all of us, oh, but wow. we were never without food. We never had anything turned off, but they didn't teach us about finance and about money or about credit. Mm. I really didn't learn about credit when I got my first job. I got me a United Airlines credit card only so I could fly home when I wanted to fly home. Mm -hmm. So I would fly every weekend from Washington, D.C. to Chicago, Illinois to be with my parents uh, and I would charge it. Oh, man. I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm 68 now and I'm just learning to really have a handle on credit and credit cards and mm -hmm. how to do my finances. And I'm learning it from you guys. I'm learning it from um, family members who are good with. But I think what's missing is the family members who are good at finances mm. need to teach the other family members how to handle their finances so that the entire family is doing well in their financial status. Definitely, definitely. And I feel like that's what, you know, the Black community is doing now by being able to have these podcasts, by being able to be out there and you know reach people that we weren't able to reach before you know we weren't in the podcasting game game you know five six years ago but now people are starting to wake up so we can you know put on and 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 acknowledge and enlighten you know our community so it, it, that's very important because not only does credit you know affect you know your everyday decisions but credit can you know open up business opportunities credit can you know allow you to not pay a, a very high interest rate on your on your mortgage or on your on your new car so that's just so very important because you know not only did you raise your credit you actually started your own business as well you know yes, yes ma'am so you know <laughs> you know I've been encouraging you to start your business for the last like two years and I'm just so happy for you, you your know, mother been trying to get me to do it for 20 years <laughs> yeah so she she definitely got me beat so tell us 
you know, what exactly is your business and what propels you to take that big leap of entrepreneurship? Well, I'm, because I want to see people healthy. Mm-hmm. I had the opportunity when I, the year that I was going to retire to learn a new phase because I always know there was more one way of being healed. Mm-hmm. And so I had an opportunity to do energy medicine. And what I found out that I love doing ener- energy medicine and I can still incorporate my conventional medicine practice into that uh-huh. and people can get healed in numerous ways. And, um, and I had the opportunity, like you say, to start my business. And the company is very good with um, encouraging us and making sure that we are successful practitioners. Mm-hmm. And I've been working very closely with them. And then listening to you guys, listening to your mom, um, tell me what to do and some avenues of how to open up. I've really learned a lot. And I'm learning. Mm-hmm. I'm never too old to learn. Never, never. Like even you, that's showing people that, you know, no matter what age you are, if you're willing to change your mindset and really lock in on your goals, you can accomplish anything. So tell our fly folks listening, how can, how can your wellness business help people with their finances? You can create wealth. You can create opportunities. I always say wealth opens up the door, but Mm. health makes you go through the door because if you don't have your health, there's nothing you can do with all of that money. It won't buy mm-hmm. you a new, well, look at Steve Jobs. He had a liver. He had enough money to buy 10 livers, mm-hmm. but he didn't or he couldn't or none matched. I don't know the whole story, but I want you guys to know that in all you're getting, make sure that your health is good because the one thing that you want is to be healthy and wealthy, Thanks. wealthy and healthy so that you can enjoy life to the fullest. So we would remember what I said, wealth opens the door, but mm-hmm. health will take you through that door. Yeah, I'm definitely glad you repeated that because that's a bar right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's touch back on that energy medicine real quick. You know, what, how is energy medicine different from the conventional medicines that we've, you know, always t- uh, that we've always taken? Energy medicine goes to the root problem like it it detects things way before it comes to the surface conventional Mm. medicine waits for it to get to the surface and then they treat the symptoms the energy medicine goes in because if it's just like your wealth if your wealth isn't flowing you can't accomplish what you need the same Mm. way with the energy of your body if it's not flowing you'll be stagnant you'll be hindered you can't move and operate the way you really need to So we go in and we get to the root problems. We see what emotion is hindering your organs from operating. And it makes what emotion, what stress level is keeping you from operating. Maybe some trauma in the past, Uh maybe some emotional setbacks that you had. We can detect all of those things in energy medicine. Oh, wow. Even before they actually come, come, uh, come, come in life. By time they by the time you see them out in the open, it has done a lot of damage on the inside. So we're preventing mm-hmm. and stopping that damage from doing any more destruction than it is. That's why I say my my uh, business is Cedars for Life, mm-hmm. and the Cedars is correcting energy distortions and restoring systems. We're okay. correcting all those distortions so that your systems are now fully functional. And you can get that wealth. And that's something that's huge, Nana, those systems in business and in health. Your systems and processes have to be running well and they have to be running at full capacity. So that's huge. Yes, yes. That's huge. So before we let you go, get back to your entrepreneurial grind, Nana, what are some final words for anyone at any age looking to start something, whether it be a business, stock trading, raising credit, beginning an emergency fund. What advice you got for us, Nana? To take a risk. Take a risk. Find out from some experts what you need to do and then try and and take some of your finances, not all of it, because you're not, people don't want to lose. At our age, we don't want to lose everything because it's too hard to start over. But take those risks. Learn. Listen to different people. Read different things. Go to the podcast. Go online. Um, 
go to some seminars that the banks have and the other people have and learn and see what it is you need to do. Because now it's like now we don't have children to worry about. So it's kind of easier to take those steps. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember, we were fearful of a lot of things that we didn't understand. Yeah. Fear kept us back. It kept us stuck because our parents told us to go get a good government job and retire from that. We told, my generation told my kids, your father, to go get an education. Well, mm. education isn't everything because it's not making people wealthy. Your generation is saying, we got the education. We went and got educated. Uh, but now our education is coming because we see and know that there's more to life than what we have. And so I want to invest in that. I want to sow seeds to the young people. I want the next generation to know that you can do this. And here, the older generation is behind you, pushing you, and mm. even pushing each other, the older generation. Us seniors pushing each other to say, we can do this. As long as we have breath, we can still do this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us on FY Fly the Podcast. But actually, before you go, man, I got one more question. You know, from you being 21, when you told a story about, you know, being in Los Angeles, hitchhiking, <laughs> and then, you know, seeing my dad turn 21, and then, you know, seeing me turn 21 last year, can you speak on how fast time actually goes and why we should start getting those finances in our health right at this moment instead of waiting to 30s, 40s, and 50s? Yes. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm telling you, I don't. It doesn't seem like I lived 68 years and I know I have more years behind me than I had to have ahead of me. And I want to make these years ahead of me be so impactful, not mm -hmm. only impactful for me, but I want my grandkids and my, I want my seed and my seed seed to see that you can still strive to become no matter what age you are, you can still push to get what it is that maybe you didn't get at 20 and, and and in your thirties, but it's mm. important to know those things. And like you said, the, to know the financial situation, know the medical situation, the health situation, know your family health history, know your, know where your shortcomings are and be okay that we all have weaknesses, uh -huh. but how can I strengthen my weakness? And sometimes it's me pairing up and I, I take my shortcomings and my weakness to you who have a strength in that area and you can help me with it. It's uh -huh. like, I'm going to help you stay healthy so that you can get your wealth. I'm going to help your friends stay healthy. So I'm going to help the people on the podcast who want to be helped, help them to stay healthy. 20, 30s, 40s, and 50s go so fast. Guys, live your best life. Live it with wealth. Live it with purpose. Live it with integrity. Live it with health. Because those things will make you have a great and prosperous and healthy life. Go on now. You, you better talk that. <laughs> you better talk that, Letty. Y'all see, y'all better come to the Thomases for health and wealth now. Come to Hassan Thomas for that wealth and Miss Pam Thomas for that health now. Like I said, I, I really appreciate you for joining us on FY Fly the Podcast. Please let the audience know where they can reach you, um, your website and everything. Go ahead. Uh, um, it's www dot nest health n-e-s health.com and when you click on it you go to find a practitioner and pamela thomas and you'll find me there and on that site you can read all about energy medicine but i suggest you give it a try and you'll like it big facts you got to tell them about that uh galatasil <laughs> <laughs> that's the energy juice right there <laughs> There's some liquid remedies that they call it. It's really infaceuticals. It's energy in structured water. And I gave Hassan a bottle and he loves it. Oh, yeah. And it gives him energy. He can tell the difference when he takes it. And I'm telling it. you, if you guys try it, it, you'll be surprised. You, Most of us pretend that we're nothing's wrong with us because we can't see it. And because when we really are prosperous and doing well, we think that we're okay. But this goes to the root and it will show you what's hindering you that you're not addressing or maybe you're not even aware of it because it's so well hidden because we push things down that we don't want to deal with. 
Well, we're going to bring them up and deal with them and confront them and get them out of you is what yes, energy medicine is going to do. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Hassan Ramon Thomas. <laughs> hey, don't we put the full government name out there. <laughs>